Their big three of Draymond, Clay, and Steph hasn't played a single game together, but the Dubs still own the second best record in the NBA behind the Phoenix Suns. While they went 1-4 and four entering the break, Golden State's nine-game winning streak minus Draymond before that displayed that if the Golden State Warriors get back healthy and productive versions of 2020's number two overall pick James Wiseman and the NBA player with the lowest defensive rating in Draymond Green, they're a very tough team to beat four times out of seven. While Steph's been struggling to recapture his early season MVP rhythm, you should remember that just under a year ago, in 15 games during April of 2021, Curry averaged 37 points on historically efficient shooting splits of 52, 47, and 91. Can he recapture that production? And how much better does the James Dre big man tandem make the Bay Area's ball club? Stay tuned for the details on all that and much more. Right quick, only 11.8% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also, leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Link is in the description for those two platforms. If the Warriors are going to add the franchise's fourth championship within a decade, Steve Kerr finding the most lethal combination of players possible will be pivotal. Problem with that is Golden State's still waiting for Draymond Green, Andre Iguodala, and James Wiseman to get to 100%. We'll get to the impact of Green and Wiseman, but we'll lead off with Stephen Curry, who started off the year like his 2021 self, taking 13 triples per night over 14 outings in November, and knocking down 43% of those deep range bombs while averaging 28, seven and five to go along with two steals. However, the chef significantly cooled off after that as January was the first time in his career that he shot under 40% in a calendar month. While Steph's bounced back with shooting splits of 50, 38 and 97 in February, we still haven't legitimately seen Curry fully recapture his early season form offensively. In addition to that adversity, Klay Thompson missed half the season and is still trying to build up chemistry with a bunch of players he's never gone through a training camp with as he works his way back from a couple knee injuries that kept him out for a total of two and a half years. Golden State is 42-17 and 17 at the All-Star break, but they are falling further and further back of the Phoenix Suns for the number one seed in the Western Conference, and also the Ja Morant Triple J-led Grizzlies are right on their tail. Luckily, throughout the entirety of all the setbacks they faced, All-Star starter Andrew Wiggins has broken out into a top bucket-getting weapon, while the recently moved to the bench Jordan Poole, along with Automatic Porter Jr., the young glove Gary Payton II, Damian Lee, and the beastly 19-year-old Phenom and Jonathan Kaminga have given the Dubs their deepest team in many years. The bench's chemistry and production hit a wall just before the All-Star break, but the Warriors are still tied with the Phoenix Suns to rank 11th in the NBA and 4th among all playoff teams in bench scoring. Throughout their run to five straight finals appearances, it was in 2015 where the Warriors ranked number nine in bench scoring with a unit fueled by Sean Livingston, Leandro Barbosa, and the eventual finals MVP in Andre Iguodala. From 2016 to 2019, with prime Steph lighting it up and then the Slim Reaper Kevin Durant joining, those teams were more top heavy with the Warriors ranking bottom 10 in bench scoring every year but the 2022 team and the first championship team seven years ago from now have some glaring similarities in terms of the second unit. While the postseason is dictated by star players, just like it did in 2015, the bench mob should provide Curry, Dre, Clay, and A. Wiggins with some much needed support. Having said that, based off injuries, the dubs stumbled into the all-star break going one and four in their last five, which coach Steve Kerr spoke on. Right now, we're not a good team, and we're just trying to find combinations that fit. I'm very confident that we're going to figure it out, we're going to get back to our game, but it requires everyone to bring a level of discipline and force and focus, and then it's going to require us to get back some guys healthy too. That confidence from Kerr and the Warriors organization amidst some turbulence was proven by the fact that they didn't scour the buyout market for a big man like many fans were hoping they would. GM Bob Myers and Steve Kerr feel optimistic enough about the returns of Dre, Iggy, and Big Jim improving their continuity to the point where they've been willing to get bullied in the post for the last two weeks. You can't imagine it's the best vibe for fans in the Bay Area or the players on the Dubs roster, but 
As Kerr alluded to, getting the full cast back intact is going to increase the clarity of Golden State's 2022 outlook. It's tough to fully evaluate whether this team is the championship favorite right now based off some role players moving up in the rotation, some moving back, while some being moved out, all as a counter decision to cover up for the players on the injured reserve. Overall, the Warriors are 15-11 when Draymond is out and 27-6 when he plays. As Kerr preached this past Wednesday, there's no way to acquire somebody who can replace what Draymond does or what Igudala does or what Wiseman might do. So the Warriors have to gut it out until Draymond's back, maybe the middle of March, and hope he's at full speed and can stay that way through four playoff rounds. Draymond's near-league-best assist numbers for a big man, his vocal leadership, physicality, and most prominently, his rotations on the back end of your defense make him a main catalyst in the dub system. There's not going to be a championship run without Draymond, who closed most of the dynasty's biggest games as the small ball center outrunning the best and biggest centers out there. That's the way the team's built. There's no other formulation or combination that makes any sense. Steph spoke on that, saying, trying to hold down the fort. Because I know the way we're constructed and the way that the pieces fit, we can compete with anybody, we know that. You can describe the next man up mentality, but our ceiling is predicated on everybody being available, pretty straightforward. Staggering Curry and Clay in the rotation has a price, but it definitely makes sense. As before Wednesday's game, Coach Kerr told Curry and Clay that he was going to start splitting up their minutes, so the dubs wouldn't have to go a minute without one of the splash bros on the court at all times. Clay played about 10 of his 31 minutes without Curry, which allowed Kerr to have at least one of them on the court for all but 2 minutes and 15 seconds against Denver. This gave Clay crucial minutes with the second unit, which has been struggling offensively as of late. Kerr also put Gary Payton II in the starting lineup, giving the Warriors buffed up on ball defense in the opening minutes. Wiggins played more with the first unit, and Clay's presence on the second unit alleviated some of the scoring pressure on Poole, plus it gave GP2 a lot of time with Curry, and having Steph and Gary on the floor together is something Steve Kerr should look into doing a lot more, considering Curry and Peyton have a plus 17.2 net rating in 524 minutes when they're both on the court. In my opinion, the young glove needs more playing time. February has seen Jonathan Kaminga average 15.3 points on 60% shooting in 26.4 minutes per game. Putting that into perspective, he doesn't turn 20 until next October, but Kaminga's already proven to be a foundational piece for the next few years, potentially the next decade. John's an extremely special commodity for the Warriors' secondary lineup, given he can occasionally manufacture his own offense, he can play as a big man or as a wing, and it's only a matter of time before opposing defenses have to start game planning to stop him. The 38-year-old Andre Iguodala has filled the role that JK is currently occupying in the past and might have to again when he's healthy, but Kaminga is evidently one of the NBA's most dynamic athletes and is definitely earning a spot in the main rotation. Even when the squad's at 100%, I don't think you should expect Kaminga's minutes to drop too much below 20 per game. So how does the second overall pick from the draft two years ago and James Wiseman fit into all this? Recovering from a torn meniscus that's kept him out for the last nine months? If Wiseman can make it back in time for the postseason, there's definitely center minutes available behind Kavon Looney, which is even more so the case when the Dubs are facing bigger lineups with imposing five men. Of course, Draymond will always shift over to the center spot for the end of each half, but there's around 15 minutes in the middle of that time, which is open for a backup big. Bielitsa and in uber small ball lineups with Kaminga are the two players getting that playing time as of right now, but there's absolutely no doubt Golden State could use dynamic two-ended plays to swing some momentum like this one right about now. In this reserve unit getting the job and Wiseman with a block. You see the help and recover there Wiseman from Wiseman? a handle. Wiseman down the lane. Wiseman ah! to the ring. Andrew Wiggins broke down the impact of his future teammate Best, saying, Obviously, he's had his ups and downs already in his career with the injury and stuff, but he's still so young, and if you look at him now, he's a tank, man. He's a tank. He's been working hard, so I feel like when he comes back, he's going to dominate. He has his head on straight. He comes into the facility, to the games with a good attitude, ready to work, ready to get better. The main thing about him is he listens, he wants to get better, he wants to learn. I think the sky's the limit for him also. That was great insight from Maple Jordan, and with Wiseman being engaged on both ends of the court during his recovery process, that bodes well towards him eventually contributing towards Golden State's dominance. 
James Wiseman would be a luxury to get back, but the Dubs far more desperately need back Draymond Green. With Green for 34 games, their net rating ranks number one in the NBA by far at 9.8. Conversely, minus Dre, the Dubs' net rating goes down to number five in the NBA at 5.4. Should the Dubs be worried after their five-game slump entering the All-Star break and the return date of Draymond still being unclear? Best answer down below in the comments section gets next video shoutout. Top 5 commenters with the most shoutouts by March 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring, so leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Kent Saludo, who says Nikola Jokic is always disrespected because he doesn't have the charisma of other stars. Casual fans tend to love flashy players or exciting players, and Jokic ain't one of those guys. He won the MVP, but others still act like he just isn't deserving, and he just won it because of the injuries to other candidates. Pause to read the rest of Kent's great answer. Leave a thumbs up to help this video spread. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.